Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShot.com, PaintballProps.com, and EscapeRoomElectronics.com. If you missed our video yesterday, it is linked below. It talks about the schematic here. And what we're going to do is we're going to import our Arduino Uno circuit onto an empty prototyping board. Now, again, if you haven't watched the video yesterday, we it is linked below. It talks about the schematic diagram. So, uh, based on that video, what we've got here is our basic power supply circuit, which is comprised of a two-pin terminal block, a 5-volt regulator, 7805, a 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, and a 100 microfarad um, electrolytic capacitor. We've got our crystal oscillator circuit right here comprised of one 16 megahertz crystal oscillator and two 18 picofarad ceramic capacitors. We've got our 28-pin dip socket for our Atmega 328PU Arduino chip. We've got our reset circuit, which is comprised of a 10 uh, kilo ohm resistor and a momentary push button. When we press that button after it's connected to the circuit, it will reset the program. And we've got our 470 ohm resistor that acts as a current limiting resistor to our 3 millimeter red LED. So first things first, what we're going to do is we're going to populate our power supply circuit which is again talked about in the video below, that's linked below. And what we're going to do is we're going to power it up at 9 volts and ensure that the output, the VCC, is regulated properly down to 5 volts. The first thing we want to do is populate our 2-pin terminal block with the terminals facing out. Now the left pin will be our input voltage pin, we'll place 9 volts on the left pin, and our DC ground on the right pin. So solder that into place on the bottom of the board. Next. Take your 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. Notice there's a long lead and a short lead. Short lead is connected to ground and long lead is connected to our positive line. So what we want to do is we want to place our long lead right next to the leftmost pin which will be our positive power supply pin and our short pin on our electrolytic capacitor to the right terminal. So we're gonna, I'm going to place that into the board and I'm going to cut the leads. I'm going to solder the long lead to the left terminal and short lead to the right terminal. Now. I've soldered into place, and now you can do this one of two ways. You can use wires on the bottom of the board or on top of the board if you'd like to make the connections, or you can make solder bridges. You spend more solder doing it this way, but when, when available, it looks a lot nicer than just adding wires to the bottom of the board. Now, we will be using a couple wires in this video, but just to give you an idea, there's no short between the two, between the uh, positive and the ground. You want to make absolutely sure, as you can see, it is separated right there. You can test with a multimeter if you like, but what that capacitor does is it cleans up, um, it acts to, as a smoothing capacitor. If we're using uh, a noisy input voltage, if you're using a battery, it doesn't make much of a difference because batteries are relatively noise free. But uh, if you're using a switching power supply or a, a DC uh, power supply module like I'll be using, that capacitor acts to smooth out the, uh, the input voltage. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at our regulator. This bad boy is our 5 volt regulator, our 7805 5 volt regulator. This is the front of the regulator, this is the back of the regulator. Pin 1 is the left pin, pin 2 is the middle pin, and pin 3 is the right pin. Pin 1 is our input line, so we're going to connect our uh, 9 volts to pin 1, ground to pin 2 as per the schematic link below, and our third pin will be our regulated 5 volt line. So it'll take 9 volts and regulate it down to 5 volts. So what I'm going to do is connect, again, pin 1 to the input voltage line, pin 2 to the ground line, and I'm going to leave pin 3 alone for the time being. Things can get a little complicated when you turn the board around as things are reversed, but uh, right now we've got, again, our capacitor, negative lead connected here, positive lead connected here, and we've got our positive lead here, and the input and the positive lead of the capacitor to pin 1, and we've got the ground line connected to the negative of the capacitor and pin 2, the middle pin, and we've left pin 3 alone. So what I've done is, it might be a little bit difficult for you to see, but I've been doing some solder bridging. Uh, input line to capacitor, positive lead to pin 1, ground to pin 2, and I've left pin 3 alone. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the positive of my 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor connected to pin 3, and I'm going to connect the negative, the short lead, of the 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor and connect it to the ground line. Now I've got everything connected as per the schematic, with exception to the 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor. We're going to use this a little bit later, and I'll explain why a little bit later. Um, this ceramic capacitor acts as a decoupling capacitor and acts to lessen the line noise um, on, on the 5 volt output and it's it's always really nice to have this as close to the VCC and the ground pins of your chip. 
So that's what we're going to do. We're not going to place it in this area. We're going to place it directly uh, beside our uh, our chip or our chip power supply circuit. We'll get there in a little bit. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to power this up and I'm going to make some measurements. I'm going to let you go uh, watch along with me. I'll be connecting nine volts from my DC power supply directly to the inputs. What I'm going to do here is set my multimeter to DC voltage. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go on the other side of the camera. I'm going to place my positive lead, my red lead, on the leftmost pin of the terminal block and my ground, uh, my negative lead, my black probe, on the ground line. And that should show me 9 volts. Now, what I want to do now to test to make sure my regulator is working is keep my negative probe on the ground terminal. Sorry about that. And I want to gently probe pin 3 on the regulator. 4.971 volts. So that's close enough. That's very close. So our regulator is working. So now we're going to leave the regulator alone and we're going to solder in our socket. I haven't soldered my socket in yet. I've only added a little bit of solder to one lead because then I'm going to solder very carefully ensuring that there are no shorts each of the 28 pins. But I'm going to skip ahead all of that. Now one thing you want to make absolutely certain of, for reference, is the socket along with the uh, Atmel 328PU chip, at Mega 328PU chip, there's a notch on the left hand side and that's our reference point so we don't turn our chip around and, and, and fry our chip. So make sure that from this perspective, from the top perspective, that the notch is facing the power supply. Solder in all 28 leads, check with a, uh, a magnifying glass if you can to make sure there are no shorts on any of the lines. There we have it. All 28 pins are soldered and no shorts. So now let's talk about the chip pinout quickly. Now this is very important. This is how you count the pins on a chip. From the notch, look down one. So the lower left hand pin here is pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So pin one all the way to pin fourteen. Pin fifteen is the top right, and then we count backwards. So 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So keep that in mind when we're soldering in the rest of our components. Here's a trick I thought I'd share. You don't need to do this, but it's an option. You can create easy traces with a stripped piece of wire. As you can see, I've got the insula insulation right here. I've stripped off the insulation from the end. So I'm going to create a common ground line to connect to and a common 5 volt line to connect to on the bottom of my board. Now you don't need to do this, but it makes things a little easier for, or easier for you so you don't have to connect wires all the way from the power supply circuit to the chip. So I'm going to take this piece, I'm going to cut it in half and I'm going to create a ground line and a 5 volt line on the board. And once I'm done, I'm going to show you what I mean. Now again, you don't need to do this, but what I've done is I've taken that piece of wire and I've strung it along here so I have an easy access ground line. I've also taken the 5 volt line and I've made it easy access on the top. I've only made solder dots to hold the wire into place. So it's up to you, you don't need to do that. Uh, you might find that this will interfere with the rest of your printed circuit board area, but since our circuit is so simple, we're gonna do this just to mimic uh, a breadboard. So now, let's talk about the reset line. What I wanna do is I wanna take my 10K ohm resistor, connect one side to pin one, and the other side to the 5 volt line on the bottom of the board right here. And that will hold the reset line high. We're next going to add our button which will act to short that uh, 5 volts to ground to reset the program. I've got the resistor connected to pin 1 and the other side to the 5 volt line. So as you can see, connected to pin 1, the other side I've actually used a little bit of lead to extend to the 5 volt line. To test your button, take out your multimeter and set to continuity measure mode and that tests for shorts. So now I'm going to zoom in on the button and give you an idea of how to test your button. So the bottom two pins are connected by default to each other and the top two pins are connected to their to each other by default. Now this is going to be very difficult for me if it, uh, to, to hold this and measure it but bottom pins are connected if I turn it around top two pins are connected but if I test the Sorry about that. If I test the top and bottom pins, I get no continuity. But when I press the button, it shorts all four pins together. So that's how you test a button. So I've populated my button. The lower right pin is connected to pin 1, which is also connected to the pull-up resistor. And my top pin, my top left pin, I've got connected to the ground line via a small wire. 
You can test this by again going into continuity tester mode, placing one lead on the input ground line, and the other, doesn't matter which one, to pin one. We should get nothing. As soon as we press the button, shorting that to ground. And if we also want to test uh, the, f the, the five volt pull up, uh, what we do is we can test the five volt line, which is, sorry, hopefully you can see this, the five volt line, which is on the top here, to the pin one, which is separated by that one k kilo ohm pull up. I set to resistance mode, should say 10k. 10.09k ohms. So everything's hunky dory there. Let's talk now about the crystal oscillator circuit. The crystal oscillator has no polarity, but we need to connect one side to pin 9 and one side to pin 10. And there we have it. Now we're going to want to take our 18 picofarad capacitors, place one lead on each of the crystal oscillator leads and the other side to ground. Now the, the uh, 18 picofarad ceramic capacitors don't have a polarity, so you just need to make sure that one side of each capacitor is connected to one of the oscillator leads and the other to ground. And as you can see, I've already connected the oscillator leads to pin, not pins 9 and 10. We have it. And here's the back of the board. So we're going to do our power supply pins last. But before we do that, remember that 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor we were talking about? We're going to place that between pins 19 and pins, or sorry, pins 20 and pins 21. So if this is pin 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, one pin there, skip 21 and connect the other side to 22. And that will add a, a good decoupling to our power supply lines, our ground line and our VCC line on the main ship. Now we want to add in our current living resistor, our 470 ohm resistor, and we're going to connect that to GPIO 13, which is pin 19 on the board. So again, pin 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So we're going to connect one pin, doesn't matter which one, to pin 19, and we're going to solder the other one and leave it alone for the time being. Our resistor has a long lead and a short lead. We want to connect the, the long lead, which is our positive or anode, to the second pin, the second pin of the resistor. And we want to connect the negative lead, the short lead, the cathode, to pin 22, which is our one of our two um, chip grounds. So the other side of the electrolytic capacitor. So we're going to place our our uh, LED in here, positive to the resistor, short, stretched over to pin 22. So just to show you here, we've got Pin 19 connected to a resistor, and the second side of the resistor is connected to the anode or positive of the LED. The negative of the LED stretches over to the ground line, which is also connected to one of the two sides of that decoupling capacitor. So now our LED is properly populated. So the only thing left to do at this point is ensure that the power supply, the ground from the power supply is connected to the two ground leads over here and the two VCC pins of the chip are connected to the third pin of the regulator. Now we do have our positive 5 volt line and our DC ground line. So if you look back at the video below with the schematic we know that we have two grounds and uh, two VCC lines and we're going to look at that again once more right now. To give you a better look, we've got two VCC lines, pins 7 and 20, and two ground lines, pins 8 and 22. So both VCC lines need to be connected together into the 5 volt line. Both ground lines need to be connected together into the DC ground line. So what I've got here is pin 7 to pin 20, shorted, or connected rather, to the 5 volt line via this wire. So I've got VCC pins connected together to the 5 volt line, pins 7 and 20. And this is where I needed to add in my wires. Uh, just a couple here. Again, you can do this many different ways. This is just me giving you an idea how to populate uh, a circuit board so it looks nice on the top. And what I've done is I've carefully uh, soldered pin 8 over to pin 22, which is connected to the cathode of our LED, which is also connected to the ground line in the one pin of the electrolytic capacitor, and then all the way back to the ground line. So now we are ready to populate our chip, power it up, and give it a test. Now your board looks nice and spiffy from the top. Bottom looks a little bit messy, but as long as you haven't made any shorts and you've made all of your connections properly, as soon as you apply 9 volts to the input, positive on the left, ground on the right, the LED should light up and blink once on for a second and then off for a second. On, off. So now the possibilities are endless. 
If you can build it on Arduino, you can build it on your own custom circuit board. And that LED, because the program is so simple, all it does is blinking. But you know what? This is like wiggle your big toe. Once you get it working on a proto board, it works. So now you can use all of the analog inputs, A0 to 5. You can use all of the GPIOs to your heart's desire. You can be much neater about this if you'd like. You can do this on a breadboard if it's easier for you. Doing a lot of the soldering that I've done has just come with years of practice. It might not even be the best soldering in the whole wide world, but this is just a demo video showing you how to import your Arduino circuits from your Arduino Uno over to your own proto board. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, if you're still watching, I appreciate it if you liked the video, but if not, don't worry about it. I just appreciate you watching. So have a wonderful day and thanks again.